I think I taught the service truck its lesson. It's been a bad girl, so I left her here on jack stands for about a week. So, bad girl. Anyway, I'm gonna take this nut off over here. I need to finish taking this hub off. That's the reason I had to go buy this socket because my old, um, uh, <laughs> my little punch and chisel trick didn't work on that nut. If you guys remember, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish disassembling this side, get everything cleaned up, and then we'll start putting the park brake shoes on. So we're finally back on the service truck. I got that nut off finally. And oh man, show you that. After math, this is what I ended up having to do. I uh, had to chew this thing out of there with a carbide bit. So it used to look like that and kind of gummed up the old wheel bearing. Oh yeah, I forgot I gotta go get a new wheel bearing. Um, shoot, I thought I had everything. Still running into problems? What? Still running into problems? No. No? Shoes pretty bad? Ah, uh, just park brake shoes, they were just wet. What, oil? Yeah. Well, that's not much of a brake shoe, is it? Park brake shoe. Did you ever turn on that ceiling fan? Oh, uh, so guess what happened? What? So, you can you tell the viewers about all the toilet paper stuff? Sure. Yeah, tell them. Well, we'll do it here in a little bit, okay? Okay. Can I put chocolate in school or when we get dirty in here? You can put him right there. Okay. Sorry, camera. Uh, and I. I want to I want you to turn the mirror this so they can uh, get what happened a little bit on. Okay, so to fight my inner redneck, I decided to go ahead and uh, get some new bearings. These bearings feel fine, but they're unknown. I don't know how long these have been on here, and let's just do the job once instead of doing it five times like I normally try to do. Um, and it's funny because I only take shortcuts when it's my own vehicle. If it's a customer's vehicle, I won't dare take a shortcut on anything. I'm like, no, we've got to replace this. But mine, I started like, uh, yeah, we could probably get it work. So, we need to take these races out. Just get you a punch, put it on one side, and then hammer away. So you'll start there, rotate it, and then start hammering on the other side. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk that race out. If you hammer too far on one side, it gets in a bind and it'll just stop and it'll fight you. And that's it. My race is out. So I mean really, the racing is looks fine. 
especially this inner one. I could probably could just clean it up and reused it. Cost me about eighty dollars in bearings, and uh, you know, oh well. I mean, this one does have a little mark on it right there where I nicked it with the uh, carbide bit. I don't think that's a problem, but you know, when in doubt, replace them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the other side. Then I'm gonna take a wire brush and I'm gonna clean up the inside of that just like I did on uh, the U-joints and I'll show you how to knock in the new ones. All right, so there's several different ways to install bearing races. My number one method is if you have a bearing race installer, the tool set for it, Great, use it, works fantastic, I love that setup. But I don't have one for this size of races. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can take your new race, put a couple of rags over it, grab your new bearing, stick your new bearing in, set a socket on there like that, tap her home, and what that'll do, the paper towels there will get in between here and the race and it won't mar up the race. You do it that way. You can get a brass punch, use a brass punch to walk them in there. Again, works pretty good. The method that I like to do is I like to take the old races, I'll cut uh, just one little, you know, cut it straight right there, the die grinder, and then I'll use the old race on top of the new race as a driver because it fits perfectly and it's very easy and quick, especially if you have a, um, uh, a die grinder set up with a cutoff wheel or an angle grinder. That is my brand new race. That is my old race with the slit in the middle. So the reason you slit this is because if you use this as a driving tool, as it goes in, if you don't have that cut in it, you're just gonna drive the race on top and then you've got a problem because you have to drive this one back out. This one makes it very simple. Uh, again, <laughs> I've done it. So I don't blame you guys if you've done it. Make sure you install the races in the correct orientation to where the taper berry goes in. The inside of this, the shaped out like that so the bearing can go in. I've done it like this because you're like, oh look, a really good surface to, to hammer on and drive. But so I got the inside of that cleared, cleaned out with that Osborne wire brush cup tool. Drop in your race. Make sure it is um, equal on all sides. Take your new race, or your old race rather and then just start lightly tapping it in to walk it to get it started. Yeah. All right, so it is all the way in there and I don't know if I'll be able to get this on camera or not. So, set this up, maybe. So, if you look right in here where that edge is, you're looking for this race right here to meet with that edge to seat all the way around. Make sure it's seated all the way around because if you don't, you'll get a fall, kind of a false positive whenever you go to tighten your wheel bearing down. You'll tighten it down, but it's not set all the way. And as soon as you lower the vehicle down and drive, that race will kind of recenter itself and get sucked in and then your whole wheel hub is loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, tap a tap tap the other one in. All right, so we got the brand new bearing, fit it in there, put it in, test fit it, make sure it doesn't feel kind of gristly or anything. It should feel, as long as you clean them up really well, it should kind of just feel smooth, absolutely smooth. No, no grinding, no clicking, nothing. Take your new seal, drop your seal on, Then just tap your seal in, go all the way around the edge. Now you can tell that this one looks wet because I've already oiled this lip seal right here. You wanna make sure that you put some oil on here so when you slide it on the hub, it slides on easy and not dry. Uh, don't put any... Don't put any um, uh, oil on the inner bearing race. And then that's it, we're gonna slide it on the truck.
Then we take our new bearing, slide it on the axle shaft. We take our ridiculous um, spicer design. Now there is a centering tab right here. Make sure that centering tab goes on that um, keyway. Now take our socket. Then take your torque wrench, set it to 60 foot pounds. Now you need to make sure that your torque wrench can do clockwise and counterclockwise. Most torque wrenches cannot do counterclockwise at all. Just because you get it to click does not mean that it's okay. You need to make sure, check the manufacturer. So that is it for the hub repair on the back. I got the hubs put back on, the wheel bearings put back on and everything. Turn my lap back on. Went for a little test drive. Everything worked fantastic on it. Justin and I are gonna be heading down to San Antonio next week doing the go-kart build with Mark Carricker. If you guys wanna see the step-by-step -step progress, I plan on putting a lot of Instagram videos up and photos and stuff like that. So hop over to Stephen Cox YouTube on Instagram. Get over there and watch everything. The only tips I have about this is the driver's side is left-handed thread. Don't make a boneheaded mistake like I made this time. And it's very odd for me to make that mistake because I've done that job, I don't know, a dozen times. And I was just in, I don't know, it's weird. You know, I, I, my mind's other places. I got that move coming up in two weeks. I'm gonna be closing on a new house. I've got to move. Uh, I don't have a shot for my stuff to go into. That's a little um, concerning and frustrating because I'm not gonna have a place to actually do any work other than the front yard. And I still have to, you know, it's gonna probably be a month or two months before I can even get the shop built. Hope you guys liked the video. Hit the like button. If you'd like to comment on it, go over to the Facebook page. There'll be a link there to this video. Leave your comments there. YouTube has still disabled my comments. I still can't, um, they still can't figure out what's going on. No, I'm not making that up. Every time I say that, somebody says the same thing of, oh, you're just lying, you're making it up. It's zero value to me to lie about that. I don't make any money off Facebook at all. It's just somewhere where we, you know you guys can post stuff, you can send me messages, things like that. But hope you liked the, buddy, uh, the video. So like I said, hit the like button, comment over on Facebook, and get out and fix something.